I'm Joshua Hinlin here at the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry in Portland, and I'm standing in the Art of the Brick exhibit by Nathan Sawaya. So we're going to take you through lots of his amazing Lego artwork here. There's so many incredible builds to show you, so let's go right into the exhibit here and check all of this out. So we're going to start in the paint by brick section and what you'll see here is a lot of very famous paintings recreated using Lego bricks. So we're going to start right over here with Girl with a Pearl Earring. This is uh, Vermeer's very famous work. Uh, it's often called the Mona Lisa of the North. And so you'll recognize what Nathan has done here and what he does with a lot of these builds is he kind of gives it a 3D effect by building a back section and then kind of building the actual figure in the painting out. So it's a uh, a whole studs width uh, out kind of 3D effect there for the actual girl. So that's a, a really interesting way he does that. And then you can see the, the pearl is very pronounced there as well with the, the clear piece. Over here we've got the great wave of Kanagawa. And so this is again using that 3D effect with several layers to, to give that layering and really make it pop out at you some more. So really, really nice way he did that and even incorporating all the, the white and blue and tan colors there to make it look a lot like the original artwork. Here is Van Gogh's Starry Night, very well-known piece. And this is a piece with kind of lots of movement in it. And uh, the, the colors all kind of move together. And so it's not the easiest piece to, to do with Lego, but uh, Nathan has, has really done this quite well, mixing the grays and the different shades of blue and the white uh, to, to really give that immediately recognizable look. Uh, you can definitely tell that's that starry night right when you look at it. Over here is a piece by Claude Monet. And so this is kind of the impressionist painting that Monet was known for. And so here you can see uh, Nathan has used a lot of just the one by one stud pieces, maybe one by two, one, one by three, the very small pieces. And so that gives that impressionist look to the painting mixing all of the different, the orange and the yellow and the blue, that, that almost sunset type of look there. So excellent job as well. Here we move on to kind of a very different piece, uh, a much darker, just black and white piece here. This is The Prophet by Emil Nolde. And it was, Emil was a German expressionist artist. And so this is, uh, again, very interesting way to do this with Lego bricks here. Unlike most of uh, the other paintings in this section, he doesn't really have a frame on this. So you can see he just kind of uses the uh, studs not on top technique to, to build on the side and create his frame out of the, the bricks there. So that's an interesting way of doing, of doing that build. Here's a build. Uh, this is called the original by Kazimir Malevich. And this is suprematist composition. And what this is, is just blocks of color on a canvas. And so it lends itself really nicely to Lego because Lego is obviously a very blocky toy, especially with just the basic kind of two by four parts. So you can see the block of green is, is very nicely rendered there, the, the big block, square block of blue and everything. So that, that piece lends itself very nicely to Lego. And again, made the frame out of the, the black bricks as well. And then the the white tiles on the background make for a great white canvas look as well. Here's a piece called New Harmony, and this is by Paul Klee. This is a, a nice modern art piece here. And so he did this in just kind of sections. It almost looks like a quilt or something like that, and uh, really m moved the sections together very nicely with the, the way he, he formed the blocks of color and everything. And again, no frame on this piece, so it's gives a nice interesting effect there. You can just kind of build from the bottom up and you can see the, the studs on the top layer there. I really like the way that piece came together. Now we'll move on to the other section here in, in the painting. This is uh, Rembrandt's self-portrait and a very dark piece here, a lot of, a lot of black, uh, which contrasts very nicely with the orange and yellow on Rembrandt's face. Over here we have of course, the Mona Lisa, uh, probably one of the most famous uh, paintings ever done by Leonardo da Vinci. And he, he captures it really nicely, mixing the, the background greens and everything with the, the black of Mona Lisa's clothes there. And then another piece by Leonardo da Vinci, Vitruvian Man. And I really like the way he, did, he used that 3D effect again to, to have the man pop out here against the background. So he's, he's built the, the circle using little tiny 
uh, one by one, one by two pieces again to, to build a circle around. And then the, the Vitruvian man himself kind of pops out there, the really nice 3D effect. Next, we have Lotus and Swallow. And so here, this is kind of, I had to use mostly tan bricks for this, a lot of kind of two by four, the two by two tan bricks, and then the grays just to give the, the impression and make the flowers and the, the bird and everything. So very nice piece there. Here's the Bayou Tapestry. Uh, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, I'm probably not doing the uh, best on some of these paintings, but uh, I'll, I'll do my best here. And so this, you can see the, the medieval knights. This depicts the Norman conquest of England in 1066 in the Battle of Hastings. So a uh, very famous depiction of that battle that I believe uh, currently sits in France right now. And just an incredible, really nice white background mixes with the, the tans and the blues of the horses and everything to make up for a very interesting piece of art there. And I like how he kind of has the, the frayed edges on the side. Uh, so it, it kind of gives that broken, torn look. And the Book of Dima, the symbol of St. John. And the Book of Dima was an Irish gospel book, uh, originally from the Abbey of Ros Roscria. And so the artist was Dima and very nice framing here. I love the way he's used the tan tiles uh, to do the the framing around the outside there and then getting uh, almost the kind of angel type figure in the middle there with the, the yellow, the very bright colors. I really like that. And this is called the second Chinese horse and this is a prehistoric uh, cave painting. So uh, you've probably seen photos of this, the very famous cave paintings here and this is just a very thin one, maybe uh, two or three uh, bricks high, very thin. Use just some small plates there to get this done. And mix the, the gray of the cave with the, the brown, the different shades of brown for the, the painting on the cave. So very interesting effect there. That kind of finishes out the painting section for us. So we'll move on then to some of his other art history sections here. We've got a lot of sculptures in this section. Right here first, though, is the kiss. And this is from Gustav Klimt, uh, another very famous artist. So uh, very interesting work, the way he did this with the, the green base at the bottom. And then moving all those the, the yellow bricks there. And he even built a really nice backdrop for this one as well, the, the nice background. And then over here, make sure we don't miss this section because there's some really neat stuff. This is the wander above the sea of fog and this was a uh, very like allegorical landscape and so that's what this artist was known for. So you can see the man kind of staring off into the fog there and Nathan's captured the fog really nicely with that mix of the tan and the, the blue and white there in the distance to kind of give that effect of uh, lostness and, and the effect of the fog there and then the, the, the black rock that he is standing on. Next to that, we have a piece by Paul Cezanne, uh, Still Life, Jug and Fruit. So this is one of his famous uh, fruit paintings and it, it looks really great here. He's, he's captured the, the fruit very nicely and still recognizable and the, the jug with the handle and everything. And then the background is just kind of a, a pretty simple mix of the sand green and the, the gray there to give it that, that nice background. And then finally we have the Scream by uh, Ed, Edvard Munch. And so this is again that 3D effect. He almost, uh, the, the figure is actually built separately from the background. So here uh, he's is a completely separate uh, 3D figure out front for the Scream. And then he, he built the, the background in as well, almost like a, a mosaic behind the figure. And he, he captured the mouth perfectly there and the eyes uh, with the screaming figure and then the, the hands on the, the side of the head. And then kind of the, the, the almost swirling background there as well. Did an excellent job, uh, instantly recognizable painting there. And if we move to this side, we've got arrangement in gray and black, number one. And so this is by uh, James McNeil Whistler. And another very famous piece here with uh, the lady sitting in front of the wall with the, the painting on it. So Whistler was uh, an American artist and did 
some very great works, and I, I like how he built the the whole the whole lady out here with the the dress and everything on all black, and then had the nice the nice wall and background with the painting uh, as as the backdrop for it. So he captured that very nicely. And then here's a piece higher up here. It's almost like a stained glass piece. So he's he's built it. It's been built with a light behind it to shine through the bricks. This is the Northern Rose window. And it's uh, from a large Gothic architecture cathedral. And so this is a really great piece. You'll, you'll see this in smaller builds. Uh, I'm sure we've shown it several times at conventions that we've covered at Lego shows where people incorporate small little uh, stained glass windows into their builds and have a light behind it. So this is kind of that, but on a really massive scale. And I love what he's done here with all the trans clear pieces. You got your blues, reds, whites, uh, everything in there to give that effect of the light shining through in a, a large sort of gothic uh, window there. So yeah, that's very impressive hanging way up there with the light behind it. Over here we have seated Buddha and so very famous uh, Buddha pose here. The artist is not known for this, but kind of one of those instantly recognizable figures as well. And he captured it really nicely with all brown bricks. And you can immediately tell what that is when you walk up. This is the Chakmul figure, uh, which is from Central America. And you find this in Central American temple sites. So it's kind of almost got a, a bowl shaped top of the head there and then kind of a laying down sitting figure as well. Very impressive. And then here's just a, a head sculpture from a, an Italian artist. And I love the way he captured the, the very thin neck and the kind of elongated back of the head. It's, it's really neat the way that works. He was able to get that all to, to stand up on just the small base of the neck there, the whole gray sculpture. And we'll come along this wall, and we've got all sorts of neat stuff. So here's some, uh, this is a sacrificial vessel. And so this is actually from a tomb in Korea. So we're getting kind of all over the world here with this different work. Here's a hand effigy. And this was from, actually that's from Ohio, like a, uh, I believe a Native American uh, burial mound. It's very cool. A double-headed serpent. And very nice. Uh, so this would have been originally covered in turquoise and stone. Yeah, very impressive. I love he, the way he captured that, that head on each side and then able to get that the kind of rounded serpent effect even with the, the square Lego bricks. I think he captured that perfectly. Here's the thinker. And, you know, very, very famous sculpture here as well that many people recognize the man leaning over, leaning on his arm. Uh, in a very meditative pose. So he, he captured this again very well using all the basic gray bricks, uh, immediately recognizable. And here is the Geyer Anderson cat, and it's a bronze sculpture. So orig originally bronze sculpture. Uh, very, very cool piece here. I like the way he incorporated those yellow, uh, almost like the, the Coast Guard type uh, water pieces into the into the build as the the jewelry on the cat and dogu if that's how you pronounce that which i i think might be correct here we've got a nice piece from japan very cool he uses some some of those simple uh, rounded pieces there to add some nice effect uh, bowl vase here and this is from near the uh, caspian sea so kind of the, the, the high head build up there with the, the bull head. Venus of Willendorf. And said that card here says that it's one of the earliest objects ever found to have the shape of a human form. So that's very impressive. And then little dancer of 14 years. So we get back to some of the, the taller sculpture here. And this is a Degas piece. Uh, so this is... Very cool. He, he built the, the dress out very nicely that, that they got, got going going on there. And yeah, very, very cool work. Even has the, the legs stuck out at the angle, just like in the original Degas piece. Very impressive. 
And then there's a few pieces over here. Here's one on the wall, the Benin mask. And so this, uh, all, the original artist is unknown on this, but uh, the original piece was made in ivory and iron, and this is from the 16th century in Nigeria. Very impressive. Here's the Critorios boy. Uh, again, probably pronouncing that wrong. This is from Greece. Original artist unknown, and you can see here uh, the missing part of its leg. You'll notice that with a lot of these, this era of sculptures, that these ancient sculptures are commonly missing pieces just because of wear and tear of, of thousands of years on them. And then next to it, we have a, a large vase piece, a uh, large pot. This is Ajax and Achilles playing dice. And so this is from Athens, Greece, and another Greek piece. And you'll notice that the really, I really like these, these, this type of artwork because of the, the bright orange contrasted with the black. And so it's, it's really impressive what they're able to achieve with that and then putting the, the black onto the, the bright orange for the, the figures as well. Like what he was able to do there. And then next to it, we have the Discobolus. Uh, once again, another Greek piece, and this is the, the discus thrower, uh, one of Greeks' uh, most famous sculptural poses. And so, yeah, many of you will probably recognize that as well. And then there's a couple pieces back here I wanted to make sure we didn't miss. Here is the Arnolfini portrait, a uh, very famous artwork, and this is by Jan van Eyck. I like what he's done here with building the two figures out in front, kind of like he did with the scream, and then building the, the room, uh, which is the, the kind of famous room full of all different symbolic objects in the background there. And he just captured the two figures so nicely with the, the way the, the lady has the, the hand on her stomach and everything, and, and the man has his hand held, out, uh, held up right there. Very impressive work. And on the other side of that, we have another piece that many people might recognize as well, American Gothic. And so this is something that is a, a major part of the cultural art history here in the United States. And so this was done by Grant Wood. And I believe the original of this, the actual painting, can generally usually be seen at the Chicago Art Institute. So if you're interested in seeing the original, you can check it out there. And once again, he used that effect of building the figures out front and then here he kind of had the house and the, the grass behind. So it, it works really well here. He even got the, the three the three pronged pitchfork and everything done perfectly there. And I like the way he did his, his glasses as well. So very impressive sculptures there. We'll keep going on here to the rest of the sculpture garden.